It's almost a bit bizarre, isn't it? How after 20 odd, 20, almost 25 years, I still get cravings to watch Bad Influence. And this morning is one of those days. It's like, ah, oh, really fancy just watching a bit of Bad Influence this morning. Now this is episode two of series one, aired on the 5th of November, 92. Hi, and welcome to Bad Influence. This week we'll be looking at the latest ice hockey game on the Mega Drive. I used to love ice hockey on the Mega Drive. I don't know why. Something about the, the bright graphics and, and the ease of maneuverability of the players. To start discovering what it would be like to fly around on other planets. So, this is the episode that I remember the most in my mind. That flyover of uh, Venus. I'm with some consoles and cartridges. Excuse me a second, Ben. Can I do it now, Violet? No, not now, Andy. Oh, he got pretty close to that, Ben, didn't he? And I think they also look at some hardware later, which is always fascinating. Oh, and this game! PC called. Look at the size of that PC! This game is it's a wedge and a half. The animation and the sound is brilliant. The sound's really eerie and atmospheric. This is where the games. View the game from different angles. Made me want a PC bad. House and discover the mystery behind it. Uh, I'm gonna take this oil lamp because I might need it later. I love that camera angle. It just incites dread doesn't it it's kind of off to the side in weird perspectives it just adds to the horror right i'm just going to go and see what's in this chest go and open uh uh oh no seeing this game and thinking that is incredible it's like a film i mean you look at it now and you think <laughs> it's almost laughable but it's still fight mode now and i've got no weapon so well done it's a well done game take <laughs> that Take that feed. <laughs> Look at that fighting action. Ah, hello again, Slimy Foot. All right, Nam. Nam Rude here at the back door. Hey. How are you doing? Uh, Nam Rude, of course, spells doorman backwards. He is at the back door in this series. Ah, the car. Now look out of the window. Is it raining? No, of course it isn't, because Aid Nye Ra the car is a cheat for a Jurassic game on the Mega Drive. Splatterhouse 2. At the beginning of the game, you can enter passwords to jump to later levels. Now, don't tell anybody else. Splatterhouse 2, of course, is no. quite a gory game, but it didn't incite the same fury as Mortal Kombat no. when it came to showing blood on screen. I think that's because Mortal Kombat had digitised graphics, whereas this was obviously a bit too cartoony, even though you get a chainsaw and you can axe people in the face. Amrude's first job was a, um, his first acting thing was a, as a female clown, I believe. Right, fair enough. And you, if you've got a video, can use yours to video. And he was very young. At the end of the program. I showed you how to use this last week. You get the idea. Video the credits, then rewind the video and play it back to yourself. Data blast. At normal speed. Play it back using your pause and your frame advance and 50 or more pages. That is a good video recorder. Look at that frame advance. It has no lines across the screen. My, you couldn't read it on my video. You. Well, the magazines normally award a percentage, but strangely enough, 50% isn't an average game. That is strange, isn't it? award less than 60%. So if you saw a game in a magazine, like Mean Machine Sega, Sega Power, with 50%, you knew it'd be a turkey. But that is halfway up the scoring system. It's really Jurassic. Four stars, pretty good, worth buying. Three stars, an average kind of game. Two stars, don't buy it unless you are a real fan of that particular type of game. And one star, we wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot joystick. It's a complete turkey. But Good. I'm sure that doesn't apply to our Advice. main review for this week. NHL PA Hockey, the follow-up to EA Hockey, one of the best-selling games on the Mega Drive ever. All the big names are there. They all have... I don't think I had this one. I think I had EA Hockey. I think I hired it from Ritz Video for a while. I like this game a lot, bro. Oh, there's Adam. Look, who holds a controller like that? Does, does anyone do that? <laughs> That's such a strange way to hold a controller. Tough a friend. Unfortunately, I've only got Sarah. Thanks a lot. To control a player, B is to pa pass and tackle, and C is to have a shot at goal. It's like how you use arcade machine controls. I mean, maybe if you were playing a fighting game, it might give you some better tapping ability. Yeah, I know. Well, it's not my fault, is it? Anyway, here comes my player now. You can't complain nothing about fouls. Oh, I don't. What a goal. That's it. Goal is set. <laughs> One of the problems in this game is you can't see where the puck is because it matches the boots. There's something about these games. And look at the play down there. It's not violent enough. You hit the players like this and get back up again. They don't get any real interest or anything. He wants some blood and gore, don't you, Adam? You love a bit of blood. I wanted to go at ice hockey, but I think I enjoyed it a bit better than Adam. 
Being as I am better than him. Yeah, sure you are, believe you. Oh, a bit of tension there. I really like the feel of the ice. I'd probably buy this one. It looks good, but it's quite confusing. I can't see the ball. That's probably because you're about six. This game is excellent. It's very playable. I would definitely buy it. And so the final scores for NHLPA hockey, the boys gave it four out of five, and the girls gave it four out of five. Excellent scores. All right, where are we going to now? Z right. In this room tend to have a faraway look in their eyes. Their job is to explore other planets. That would be a pretty cool job. They're tracking spacecraft that are traveling... Oh, what keyboard is that? It looks like a TRS or keyboard. Obviously, Magellan NASA aren't NASA using what, TRS computers. Venus is the next yeah, no, planet it might be. the sun. It's the nearest planet to the Earth and most visited. Over 20 spacecraft have been sent there. But until now, scientists have known very little about the surface. Yeah, we've sent 20 spacecraft, but we don't have many pictures, do we? Cloud. The Magellan spacecraft has special radar that can see through the clouds and send back information about the surface. That is so an 80s BBC documentary type animation. Page after page of computer learning data. in schools. Some of it can be converted into photographs, some into information about the heights of the hills and valleys. But here at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, right outside Los Angeles, they can use very powerful computers. Look at that graphic in the background. That must have taken some process processing power back then. Yeah, this blew my mind. This is like create flyovers over the surfaces. A 3D recreation of Venus. I was like, wow, you could go to another planet. But I also thought it all looks exactly the same. Taken by the Magellan spacecraft as it orbits. There's very little point in having that. And they're tied together mosaic to create larger pictures of the surface of the planet essentially it's a bit like no man's sky spacecraft sends back three different types of information pictures height and how hot the planet is at different points before the fly-throughs can be made all this information has to be combined this is the computer software we use to design the movie it's a nice monitor look at that phone on top that and is generate from those Lovely. Light path by flying through each keyframe in sequence. You can't put a phone on top of your computer nowadays, can you? Top of the monitor, all these flat screens. And telling the computer where to be. Taking all that away from this us. This is the camera position here in the horizontal view. You have the direction of look mm. here and the extent of the field of view being the green line. Nice. This is the side view, yeah. the vertical view, and you can see this red line yeah. is the the height information a profile of the height information wow. along the direction of look. We're looking here up a valley at the volcano, and so you can see the volcano here. I mean, this here, was pretty cutting edge. I mean, obviously, this is the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. This would be one keyframe. When it comes to being ahead of the curve, they should be. For the videos that we make. And so to do an entire movie might take several days or a week. The team tried out the technique in a more down-to-earth way. They used satellite pictures of California and height data from ordinary... So this is essentially Google Earth now, isn't it? Five continuous days... Wait, Google Earth is in much better detail. ...the famous Rose Bowl. <laughs> We've come a long way. You may wonder... But this just stuck in my mind. It just... images. Well... This image was taken by the Soviet spacecraft, and it was taken by a lander. In fact, you can see the edge of that spacecraft. Those dodgy communists. It was transmitted back <laughs> from that lander to the Earth, and so we have... Yeah, I think that's one of the only images we have, isn't it, from the surface? We use the hues from this image to create the color that you see in the Venus flybys. So that's the problem, it's all very uniform, isn't it? It's all just like, here's one colour, slap it about everywhere, change it a little bit. Is that a helicopter landing pad? Aliens. I like this music, it's very ethereal. Bit of stutter there. This is my souvenir. 486 couldn't keep up. It's a postcard of Venus as you'll never see it, without its clouds. 
The latest rocket is carrying the Mars. I have a small coffee, I think. And they should be getting photos from mm. Mars in about mm, 1994. 94? Wow. Hey, stay cool. 22 years ago. Is Eterps. Sorry, Sprite. A sprite is a collection of points that move about on the screen as if they were all joined together. Good explanation now. Or Mario or Sonic. Here's a cheat that Zed might be interested in. It's for Agony on the Amiga. When the title screen Amiga 600. music is playing, type in the word FANTASY in big capital letters. Then, when you start the game, you can press the F1 key and you get the big I remember that game. I had a demo of it, I believe. 20,000 points and the F4 key gives you an extra life. Oh, and by the way, you can press these keys as many times as you like. Got that, Zed? It's Z right, not Z, contrary to what certain sad people might think. Now it's time for this week's news and previews. A long time ago on a planet far, far away, Star Wars was a hit on the NES. Now here's a mega preview of Super Star Wars for the SNES. It's yeah, this game, this game was... Uh... Pretty grand effort to destroy the groundbreaking, wasn't it? Destined to be even bigger and it was like one of the early Spectrum games, you know, where you had lots of different types of technical limits and due out next playing spring. style. Don't forget the future show, which starts Mini games. Today at Earl's Court. All the new games will be there. Bad oh, I so want to go to that show. The national Games Championships, and we'll see you live there on Sunday. The Lynx! Games for the Lynx are in the pipeline. The first is Dirty Larry. He's a mean cop. I used to love the Lynx. I had a Lynx. I still can't find my Lynx. A big game. It's in the garage somewhere, I hope. Best intro sequences I've ever seen. But it was then there's Dracula, not Revel of this game. I always like the look of this game. Havoc as you try to escape from his castle. Of course, for Lynx. It's kind of eight. It's a hybrid of eight 16-bit. It's got 16-bit components. With the bad influence T-shirt, the question was. It does have an eight-bit data bus, I think. But the graphics on it were awesome. Adam Dina on your entry form. You're halfway there. We'll have a rummage because all the correct entries are in here. Battery life was probably about 10 minutes, maybe 20. Andina, that's correct. Janine Robinson, age 12, Bostock Walk, Chorton on Medlock, Manchester. Well done, you're a winner. This week we're giving away... Imagine if you watch, you're watching this now and you never realised you won back in the day. The question is, what's the name of the two Perhaps it got lost in a post and you hear your name come up. Answers to what would you do? On postcard or sealed down on envelope marked competition it's unlikely. by next Monday. And we've had lots of letters already saying how much you enjoy the programme, for which we thank you, and also sending us your uh, artwork, as requested, Ian Hall from Hackney, London, oh. EH, on our famous nationally known artist. Ian, Rebecca. look at thank you. you, you uh, I wonder what you're doing these days. Rebecca Law, who is eight and lives in Seymour Girl. I wonder what these kids went on to do. A fine peregrine falcon. Probably um, nothing to do with art. Discs. Most of which were too gruesome to show on telly, but we snuck some of them on the data blast at the end of the show. You However, naughty bastard. And show from Matthew Haslam, age 13, from Rochdale. Thank you for sending all that work in. If you saw it on the telly, you will receive a Bad Influence t-shirt in return. Nice. Now for some more games. I'll have one of them, please. Super Hunchback for the Game Boy finds our hero in an enchanted forest. Here's Jean-Pierre. This isn't usually the kind of game I'd go for. I'd go for a sim, and beat him up or something like that. The no Game Boy was very play, appealing, wasn't it? It was very endearing. It was just something about it. I mean, it was when one appears, and you get essentially monochrome, but it's not easy, though. You have to bounce along the. I don't know. I guess it was something a bit spectrumy about it. Something appealing. It did have a Z80 processor. You stand had some custom uh, chips as well. Which allowed it to do things like uh, scrolling and sprites and stuff. Move in different ways, and you can even make him swim, as well as jump and run. It's certainly not a boring game, that's for sure. Mm. I think the sound's great for a Game Boy. This bit's great. He don't do anything. He starts to play with his yo-yo, read a book, or whistle. I remember watching a program once when they were talking about the Mega Drive, and they demonstrated that when Sonic wasn't doing anything, he started laying down and doing little animation things. And they were like, oh, you wouldn't be able to do this on the Master System. And that was their selling point. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Of course you can do that on the Master System. It's a really good game for the Game Boy. I think I'd buy this one. It's really fun and it builds easily. And the scores for Super Hunchback. The boys gave it four out of five. And the girls agreed. They gave it four out of five. Wow. Four out of five. There's one to pick up. Assassin is an arcade game for the Amiga. You get to be a honky hitman who is dropped deep behind enemy lines with orders to kill the evil Maiden. Whoever he is, is oh. Catholic. It's not often you see an Amiga review on here. Sort of thing. It's a pretty violent game. And these are the dogs that tried to get you through. I mean, this was probably the peak period for the Amiga, but... You can get brilliant weapons. 
I still didn't get, get half as much airtime as the consoles of the time. I love this one. You're in a genetic asylum and there's all sorts of evil things. He's throwing a banana. The sound effects are excellent. Didn't the monkey eat the banana? Didn't that smack him in the back of the head? In the background. This is a mad doctor. I love this game. It's really playable. I should get these um, kids, these little kids playing like Mortal Kombat or like something ferocious. I like the way the halo moves through it. Something that will scar them for life. The graphics are excellent, but it's not that playable. Well, it wouldn't, would it? Because it's just a video game. I prefer games with a better difficulty curve. This game's got a difficulty worked out all wrong. You die too many times when you start playing it, so you get bored of it. I wonder if <laughs> Adam. Really tells my it just seems why I disinfused. For assassin, the boys gave it three out of five. What the hell am I doing here? Gave it four out of five. The Bad Influence Studio is full of every kind of console and computer there is. And some but have you ever wondered air conditioning pipes five? hanging precariously from the ceiling. Can I do it now, Violet? Yes, now, Andy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> This is the bit I remember as well. This is where we look inside some machines. Boxes. Well, you won't be surprised to learn that it's lots and lots of computer chips. I'll give you a quick guided tour of the Mega Drive. Fascinated me. Still does. This one here is the one that actually runs your game. 68,000. Yeah, we've got the sound Board department. Chip. And this little square one here is really clever. This is your sophisticated graphics chip. This is the one that provides graphics the like of which you see in, say, Legend of Galahad. Now, look at this. In the background, the background is moving so smooth. Parallax. Because the graphics chip is concentrating nice. on the background, leaving the main games chip to concentrate on running your game. That's how these things uh -huh. work. This is the inside. Slightly simplified, but I mean, most of these systems nice. look much the same inside. That one there is the graphics chip in a snares, and it's that little chip that makes games like F Zero have that rather unique arcade quality about them. And this is what the inside of a cart looks like. It can have up to four chips. That's yes, the first time I saw the inside of a cartridge. Did anyone rip their cartridges apart? It's a battery that powers the memory when the machine's turned off. But this is the really interesting one. Only the manufacturers really know how it uh, works. Lockout chip. But it matches up with a similar chip inside the machine. And without it, the game just won't run. Now, the manufacturers put these protection chips, as they call them, inside their cartridges to prevent other software companies from knocking up games, running them on your systems, and not paying. But they found a way around it, didn't they? Yeah, here we go. This is called a plug through. Now, what a plug through essentially is. And with is, such a good game, game as well, here, Micro Machines. But without the protection chip. So, to run it on your system, where does the protection chip come from? One of your normal games. Such sneaky bastards. Such a clever idea, but. It's wired to cut out the game so that, from this cartridge. That's not good. Let's go play Havoc with your NES so when you plug the whole of this socket, system, isn't it? Your cartridge wrong. socket. Plug through games will cost you about £10 less than normal ones because there's no... Unless you've got a top loader. But beware, they're not approved by the console manufacturers. So if you use one and it damages your machine, it's not covered by the guarantee. Uh, nor is it if you hit it with a mallet, by the way. <laughs> oh, nam. Hello. Thanks very much for the cheap book, Tom Simmons from Glassbury. Of course, I knew them all already. I'm grateful like bastard. Someone like Andy or Violet. When I play Street Fighter 2, obviously, I always win. But I can't work out whether it's because my character is stronger than the other or not. That, his place looks a bit like my room at the moment. Against himself. Except for the tree growing over the tip. Well, no, it's probably quite similar. Down, right, up, left, Y, B, X. And then when the sound goes down, hit the A button. Oh, you can now choose Street Fighter music. One, and as play So nostalgic. Two. So, if you've got any friends, you should have an even match. Thanks, mate. Well, that's about it for this week, but don't forget to video the date of last, which starts in a few seconds. Join us next week when, amongst other things, we'll be reviewing an excellent new film about a group of computer high-tech security experts. It's called Sneakers. See ya. Oh, I haven't seen that. I do remember Good. Bugs. Remember Bugs, the, um, was Sorry, it BBC series? <laughs> Every everything went a bit hacker crazy, didn't it, around this time period? Oh, yes. The Even the awful email film with Tom Hanks. Ugh. Stand by for the data blast. Well, that was Bad Influence Episode 2 from Series 1. I feel like I can start my day now. Oh, look at those pictures. Was that one that... <laughs> that wolf? Was that one of the, the gruesome ones he was talking about? <laughs> yeah, it looks horrific. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. And I'll uh, see you next time.
Bye-bye.